going on guys welcome back to this video today's video will be for try hack me lovers and today we're finishing up the pre-security track so i have made a playlist as you can see here with all the videos that you will need in order to complete the pre-security in try hack me so basically today we will going we will be finishing up this track by finishing these uh, three rooms so these are the latest three rooms that we need to finish in order to wrap up this track they are about windows fundamentals and by the end of this video you will have a quick broad overview of the different parts of the windows operating system so let's get started so as you can see here this is a, a machine that um, I spawned from TryHackMe to illustrate the different parts we're going to talk about. The first thing we talk about in Windows operating system is the file system. So we can check out the file system of the current installation of the Windows by going to this PC, uh, right clicking on the main disk properties. And from here we can see that the file system is NTFS or new technology file system. Previously, Windows used the FAT or the File Allocation Table, which is kind of older than NTFS. Now, NTFS offers more features than the FAT. Among them, you can store, as you can see, larger than 4 GB files. And this, the permissions can be set on the folders and the files. For example, as you can see here, there are permissions set on the folder. And also, you can set permissions on the files. Additionally, in, in compression and encryption, you can apply a compression and encryption on the files. Now let's talk about different permissions that you see in Windows file system. As you can see, as per the Microsoft documentation page, these are the Windows permissions. We have read, write, read and execute. So basically, in Win the read is shared or it's common between Linux, Linux and Windows. Write is the same read and execute you can set both read and execute list folder contents modify as you can see here you can read the files and write them so if if you have modify permission you can modify the file and read it as well full control now it's very essential to understand these permissions from all the perspectives if we talk from all angles the, the forensic if you want to if you want to do forensics if you want to do pen testing if you want to do instant response if you want if you are just an IT admin it's very essential to understand these permissions so basically as you can see we can check these permissions by going to any f directory or folder on the Windows operating system we can right click check properties and we go to security so the security tab we can see these permissions set here so these are as you can see the groups or usernames assigned and these are the permissions assigned for every group or every user for example if we click on the current user this one as you can see there are no permissions assigned this one has read and execute list folder contents and read you can change the permissions by clicking on edit so by clicking on edit you will change the permissions for the highlighted user and this will brings up this will bring up this interface where you will click on the user and be able to change the permission but looks like we cannot change the permissions because maybe the current user we are logged in cannot change the permissions on directories and files as you can see our user here if we go to cmd so here we are listed as the administrator now if you click on administrator this is the administrators group so here let's see here. net user Net user is a command to list the currently active users on the system. So we have administrator, we have try hack me Billy. If you click on advanced, 
Here you will see a detailed list of the users and their permissions and whether it is inherited from other folder or not. Okay, we will get back to this in detail later. Now here it's enough to understand what are the permissions and how you can change them by right clicking on properties and selecting the user or the group for which you want to change the permissions. So the file system in Windows, the first thing to note is the Windows folder, this one. The Windows folder contains the installation of the current Windows version. And as you can see most of the time, the Windows folder comes stored under the disk C. It's not necessarily uh, stored in C, but most of the time you will see it under disk C. But if you want to install Windows on another disk, you can definitely do that. So Windows contains the or houses the all of the files related to the operating system specifically we talk about the system 32 system 32 is one of the critical folders in the windows operating system so any change you make in this folder will affect the entire system any change you make here will affect the entire system so before making any change to the files and folders stored under system 32 make sure to know what to change, why to change, and make sure you have a clear instructions. Alright, we have program files and program files x86. These are for the files that you install from uh, the various sources. Alright, now let's talk about the user accounts, the profiles, and permissions. So basically, that the management of the user accounts, profiles, changes depending on the version of the operating system so if it is a regular windows 10 or windows 11 uh, you can just change it from the or you can manage the user account from the settings if it is a windows server like the current one we can easily manage them from a central place now a windows server may have active directory installed or may not that also changes so if you have Active Directory installed, you can change or manage the users from directly from Active Directory. But if it is not installed, like in that case, we can manage them from a central place. So we can go here, run, and from here we can type L user manager. For me, you will be able to effectively manage the users and the groups on this machine. Now, again, this is a Windows server. This interface will not be available on other versions of Windows. Like when on my machine, it is a Windows 11. If I click or run here, as you can see, on my machine, I don't have it. This snap in may not be used with this edition of Windows 10. All right, let's get back here. So users, we get the users with the full name, the description, and we get the groups, as you can see here. Now, to get details about every user or every group, you can just right click on any, sing any single one of them, like this one. Properties, and we can see the full name, the description, the options enabled, what are the groups, that the user is a member of, the profile, and the environments. We can also see the remote control, if we can uh, do some remote desktop on that user, and the profile. If we go to groups, we can check out the groups as well. For example, the administrator's group. See who is in that group, so members, only a user named administrator. We can add users to that group by clicking on add and searching the user from here. For example, try, hack me, check names. Let's see. Me, Billy. Yeah. You can add that to the administrator, but we're not going to do that just for demonstration. Another place to manage the user accounts is from the settings. So click on settings. 
and we go to accounts now probably this is the place from which you manage the users on other versions of Windows you can again do that from here another way is to go to control panel click on small icons and then we have the user accounts let's see where it is yeah user accounts and again from here we can add a new user change an existing user and configure other users all right now let's talk about the user account control so user account control is a method to So now let's talk about Windows or User Account Control or UAC. Probably you have heard this term before and it is used a lot in the security community. Especially when you heard about bypassing UAC or User Account Control. So basically as per Microsoft, User Account Control is key part of Windows security. Reduces the risk of malware by limiting the ability of malicious code to execute with administrator privileges. What does that mean? It means that when you want to execute a program or a task with administrator privileges, user account control will prompt you for the username and password of the administrator. If you enter them successfully, you will execute that task with administrator privileges. It is much like sudo in Linux. When you execute sudo bash, for example, if there is a user account control, the version of user account control here, it's going to ask you for the username and password. Right, so here, when there's a program that requires higher privileges, it's going to ask you for the username and password of the administrator user. If you enter them successfully, you will execute the user with higher privileges. So it's a protection mechanism, basically, so that malware and other malicious code cannot perform or execute programs or tasks with administrator privileges. They will see a UAC wall or UAC pop-up which will ask them for the password of the administrator user. As you can see with UAC, each application that requires the administrator access token, right, must prompt the end user for consent. This is a pop-up screen you will see. If you go here uh, and run as administrator, right now we are logged in as administrator here so it's not going to ask us for the username and password but if we happen to log in as a regular user and try to execute this as administrator it's going to ask for the username and password for the administrator account this is essentially the uac or the user account control okay So here, as you can see, the credential prompt, this is it. The credential prompt is presented when a standard user attempts to perform a task that requires a user's administrative access token. So as you can see, you will be prompted to enter the admin username and admin password. Now, of course, there are multiple methods, multiple ways to bypass user account control. Uh, it's, not, it's not the subject of this video but i am sure we have covered this in the past uh, definitely in a try hack me or hack the box video i just cannot remember what is it maybe i will search if i find something on my channel i'm gonna put it in the video description all right now this is user account control let's now talk about one of the popular components of the windows operating system which is the task manager so the task manager as you can see guys provides information about the processes applications running on the system it also can be used to monitor the performance of the system when it comes to cpu and the ram usage as you can see here this is the list of the applications right from here and here are the background processes now if you want to take a look at the processes running these applications you can go to the details tab we can see the exact processes, the username running the process, and 
information about the consumption uh, of this process, CPU and the memory and the UAC, the virtualization. On this tab, we can check the services and a detailed view of the services can be provided or is provided by clicking on open services tab button. You will see a new uh, interface coming up with the services running. We're going to come to this and we have the users we have as you can see under the users we can see the consumption of resources the CPU and the memory by this user and under the user we can see the processes running under that user now task managers especially process hacker um, process monitor there are many other there are many versions more advanced versions of task managers very useful if you want to um, conduct an instant response malware forensic or investigating a malware on a machine these task managers are very useful here we can see the performance as you can see we have five percent consumption on the cpu here we have two gigabyte or 60 percent consumption these are very essential and useful if you want to troubleshoot why the operating system is slow so if you encounter a slack right or is it operating system is slacking somehow you can open the task manager and check the performance tab once you see it for example a spike in memory we have as you can see more than 60 percent or approximately 60 percent consumption in the memory we can go to processes and we can sort here by descending order as you can see we have the anti-malware anti service executable which is uh, the Windows Defender process as you can see the service using this process is Windows Defender and it's consuming 62 megabyte now it's, it's nothing of course but this is the basic usage of any Windows operating system so as you can see there are no third-party applications here only Windows processes or processes related to Windows so this means that if uh, here we have 60% consumption and as you can see here the total memory is 2 gigabyte which means that this win this is this version of windows is barely able to run the windows operating system you cannot run anything about that all right so now we talked about these essential components now let's talk about something else let's talk about the system configuration how we can check the system configuration so another tool or popular tool in windows operating system is the ms config so ms config here as you can see we have these components general the boot so in the general tab as you can see here, we can see what devices and services for windows to load upon the boot app as you can see it's selected as normal boot or normal setup load all device drivers and services diagnostic load basic devices and services like running windows on uh, minimum version so here it's useful if you want to troubleshoot uh, performance or like low performance on the windows selective startup here you can see select the services and the startup items that will be running on the windows now usually it is normal startup boot here are the boot options for the windows operating system as you can see we can see the uh, path or the directory from which the windows boots up you can change this as well if you want if you have dual os's and you want to change which one loads up first you can change that from here services Again, here we can see all the services configured for the system regardless of their state. So we can see the stopped services, the running services. And of course, a service, you know, guys, a service is a special type of application that runs in the background. And here we can see the startup. So in the startup, we can see all of the processes or applications that runs when the system starts. So basically as you can see we cannot see we cannot see anything here because 
as you can startup items are not enabled on that system now on newer versions we can see the startup items on using the task manager so in my windows for example if i check on details the startup apps i can see all the applications that start with windows the list here the list of the applications here affects also the performance of the uh, operating system if we have many programs running the 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 boot up of the windows will be kind of that's not gonna be fast so it is recommended that you minimize the number of items enabled if you see item that you don't recognize you can just right click and you can as you can see this is enabled because it's disabled you can click on disable for example this one is enabled I can disable this I don't want this to run with Windows it doesn't mean that the program will not run anymore it just means that the program will not run when the Windows starts when you first log in it will save up resources and it will make the put up process faster tools in the tools here it contains many popular tools necessary for managing Windows and it contains the command used to run them for example change UAC settings changing the account control settings as you can see this is the command you can for example take this and run it separately from the command prompt but you don't need to do that you can just click on launch it will launch the tool as you can see to control the threshold of the user account control settings system information you can click on launch and view the system information so basically these are many popular tools for managing windows you might want to consider uh, booking bookmarking this place in your mind guys whenever you want to manage windows you can check out the tools here and see if any of the tools here come comes in handy depending on the scenario you are trying to figure out all right again we have we have something useful this is the computer management let's launch the computer management and talk about it As you can see under computer management there are many useful tools necessary for managing windows so we have the task scheduler it is similar to the cron job in linux and from here we can create tasks schedule tasks and run processes for example as you can see here by clicking on task schedule library we can see a list of all the tasks all the scheduled tasks the status and when the task runs and when is the next time to run and as you can see here it is a brief debugging information about when the last run result what is the last run result for example let's take a look at this one properties and we can see description of the task we can see the user that configured the task or running the task and here we can see the triggers the triggers specifies the time when the process will run it runs every day at 6 15 a.m morning the actions what it will do it will run the this process so basically in triggers we specify the time in actions we configure the process that will run or that process that will that the task will run or the command you can set commands as well conditions you can specify specific conditions for the task to run if you have any other settings and here are the history here's the history here all right so next we have the event viewer now event viewer is very useful if you want to troubleshoot windows errors or application errors or even if you want to take a look at the security events who locked into the system who failed to log in successful logins failed logins so on and so forth you can use event viewer event viewer is used highly by incident response teams when they want to take a look at the locks shared folders we can see here a list of the shared folders by the operating system if you click on double click on shares we can see look at this the current shares for example under shares are the default share of windows this one this one here and default remote administration shares created by windows as admin now sessions we can see a list of 
users who are currently connected to the shares and open file we can see all folders or files that are connected or, or that the connected users access will list under the open files local users and the groups so under performance we click on performance monitor and we can see here the performance is used to view performance data either real time or from a log file there is nothing here data collectors okay device manager so the device manager here is very useful as well to manage the devices connected to the operating to the hardware whether peripheral or not peripheral so we can configure and view the hardware and also we can disable any hardware attached to the computer like usbs mouses all will show up here all right now the storage under the storage we can see windows server backup because here i'm running or the machine is running windows server backup and we can see the disk management as well so disk management as you can see is a utility that windows or windows that enables you guys to perform advanced storage tasks like you can set up a new drive you can extend an existing partition you can shrink a partition or you can assign or change the drive letters as you can see here we have one gigabyte that is unallocated if you want to use them we can right click oh we cannot create a new simple volume so sometimes you can if you have unallocated space above that maybe enough allocated space like five gigabyte you can right click and create a new disk that will show up in the disk lists and lastly we have the services and applications from here we can check the services and routing a remote access WMI control now, WMI control it is related to the Windows management instrumentation so Windows management instrumentation is a depreciated tool by the way in Windows 10 but this is related to PowerShell it allows scripting languages such as Visual Basic or PowerShell to manage Microsoft Windows personal computers and servers. So the Windows it's used by the Windows operating system basically. All right, now, so these are the computer management tools. Say we want to check the system information, we go to System Information here and we launch. So under System Information, we can see three sections: Hardware Resources, Components, and Software Environment. So system summary here, as you can see, will display general technical specifications for the computer. We can see the OS name, we can see the system name, the RAM, the usable RAM, so on and so forth. It's, it's not that complicated, I, I think. Now, hardware resources, it is related to the hardware. So these are information that only advanced users can uh, make sense of. We have then the components. So here we can see specific information about the hardware devices and installed on the computers. For example, we can see um, information about the display monitor, right? As you can see, it's Microsoft Display Adapter. And all necessary details about the driver, the memory consumption, the addresses, so on and so forth. We can check also the network, network adapters, details about the current network adapters, the USB connected to the uh, device, there are no USBs for now. The sound device, no sound devices. Input, keyboard, remote desktop keyboard device. So all of the information about the hardware connected to the device, whether external or internal, you will see all of their details under the components. So now it, in software environment, we can see information about software and installed or baked into the operating system and software also you have installed. So you can see both softwares installed by you and softwares built in with the Windows operating system. System drivers, we can check the drivers from here. All the drivers. It's a long list. With detailed information about the file using the driver, the type, the start mode, the status, so on and so forth. And we can also check the network connections. 
This is the equivalent of netstat command running tasks. And take a look at this. We have environment variables. So environment variable guys, they store information about the OS environment basically. For example, this information includes details such as the operating system path, as you can see here. Where is the operating system path? Let's check this. This one. And in addition to the number of processors used by the operating system, as you can see here, information about the processor, and as well as the location of the temporary folders, for example, as you can see here, where are the temp files located. So, any change on the environment variables will affect the operability of the operating system. So, basically, if you change the location of uh, temp files where it is located, you can change them from here. And then the system will store the temporary files in the location that you specify. Another way to view the environment variable guys is from the control panel. So basically if we go to control panel and we look for system sec and security and then we go to advanced system settings. Security and maintenance. system and security where it is system for now advanced system settings and then we can navigate to environment variables performance with the profiles hardware ah here and this is another place from which we can view, list, and configure environment variables. All right, now let's talk about something else. Let's talk about something called the resource monitor. So we knew that from Task Manager, we can monitor the consumption of CPU and memory per user and per process. But how about a detailed view of the resources consumed by the different processes and users? So for that, we will need something called the resource monitor. So resource monitor displays per process, as you can see, and aggregates CPU, memory disk, network user information, in addition to providing details about which processes are using the individual file handles and modules. As you can see here, the tabs, we have CPU, we have disk, network, and memory. And under each one of them, we can see the list of the, or we can see the consumption of resources. As you can see here for the CPU, what are the processes using the most CPU? Let's take a look here. So if we sort, as you can see, the, the first one is performance monitor. As then we can see a Windows process. If you want to see the consumption of resources by disk, we can check them from here. And we can sort by the read, write, and total. The, the read and write operations by every process. The network, which process is consuming the most number of packets, as you can see from here packets sent or bytes sent by second I mean he can here check the memory as well so here's a detailed guy detailed uh, kind of detailed inspection on the resources consumed or consumed sorry by processes depending on what kind of resource you want to monitor want to monitor the disk resource the network the memory and CPU you can check them all from here okay now let's talk about another popular management tool in windows which is the registry editor so as you can see guys registry editor is a central hierarchical database it's a database essentially used to store information necessary to the operability of the windows operating system and its applications so basically any configurations you make under registry again will affect the entire operability of the operating system typically if you want to make configurations that take immediate effect on the current user you can check this hierarchy from here 
on the entire machine you can check the entire machine from here now registry is a sea of knowledge we're not going to be able to cover everything from here but make sure that any change you make under the registry is made with the clear instructions and under clear scenarios all right so now we have covered multiple management tools or tools used for the management of the windows operating system now let's go and take a look at another thing which is, which is the windows updates if you go to settings and check the update from here we can configure updates so most of you know guys that when you click on check on updates the windows will initiate a process that will look for updates from the microsoft repository but there is more to the story if you click on advanced options you can control the update process you can as well post the updates if you want you can get notifications and if you are on metered connection you can allow this option again you can change the hours change active hours so if you have high uh, or high number of tasks to perform on windows you don't want to be interrupted by the windows update so you can set the update to take place outside of the working hours now windows update is a essential component guys to keep your windows up to date so if you don't have any policies that prevent you from updating windows make sure to check this uh, interface most often and update your system because it's coming it, it contains many essential updates for the security and operability of the windows operating system now let's talk about the security of windows how security is managed in windows so we, it's managed by something called the windows defender and it is kind of enough uh, i'm not saying i'm saying it's kind of enough for the average user to protect themselves if the average user doesn't click on um, attachments from unknown sources and if they don't download tools or binaries from unknown sources i think windows defender it's my own perspective Windows Defender, Windows Security is kind of enough for the average user and for the average usage. We can configure here, we can configure here various options for the working of Windows Security, Windows Defender. As you can see, we can perform a quick scan. The scan options, quick or full or custom scan. In the custom scan, we, we can check a specific directory or file to scan. Scan now. As you can see here, we can browse to the directory we want to, which we want to scan. Coming back here, we can turn on the virus protection or turn off from here. We can manage the various settings connected to that by clicking on manage settings. And we can enable or disable various options related to the security of your windows. Again, you can manage exclusions from here. So if you want to... Um, if you have something that is flagged by your OS or by your Windows Defender as suspicious, but you know that this program doesn't do anything, you can just exclude it from here. Now on the same tab, we can check the firewall and network protection. From here, we manage the Windows firewall. Switch the firewall on, switch the firewall off on which network. We can see domain network if the, do if the computer is part of uh, an organization. Private network, it means it's your home network or any network that requires authentication, username and password or only password. And public network like Starbucks or any network that enables, or any place that enables open Wi-Fi. These are the various settings that we can use to configure the firewall. For example, allow an app through firewall. Sometimes you install a game or a piece of software and the software just doesn't work. Maybe the software requires a network connection and your firewall is preventing that software from performing a proper handshake with the server. So you can go here and click on allow an app through the firewall and this will brings up this will bring up this where you can check if the app is listed here. If not, you can allow another app and browse to your application. The executable file, add it and click on allow both private and public if you are uh, playing or using the application from networks other than your home network uh, 
advanced settings. So from advanced settings here, guys, we can specifically allow specific ports or specific programs uh, and the direction of the connection. As you can see, we have inbound rules and outbound rules. Inbound rules means that the rules or the communications or the packets coming to your PC from sources on the internet. Like if you have, uh, most of the time, if you are hosting a server, a gaming server, for example, on your PC and you want people to connect to it, you want to allow the port or the program by going to inbound rules. Uh, as you can see, click on new rule. And from here, you can allow program, port, or predefined, let's like, uh, depending on the resource, or custom rule. Custom rule, here you can check the program or the program path. But from here, guys, the, the gist of this section is to allow in incoming packets. If you have a server on your machine, you're going to need to open the port or allow the program from here. Outbound rules, it's for the packets originating from your PC. If you cannot connect to a specific server or a specific uh, destination, you will want to allow the program or the port from here. All right, go back. Let's see what we have else. Network connection is, looks like we have problems with the network connection. All right, let's get back here. So now we talked about Windows Update, Windows Security, troubleshooting. It's here for, you know, troubleshooting the various kinds of issues you have. Recovery, if you want to do a reset or restore from backup. Let's go back and discover something else. Let's search for something called the Smart Screen. Application and Browser Control. So, the smart screen is a screen that you probably have seen when you want to open an application. It just shows up as the blue blue screen, right? Right, blue pop, not blue screen like blue on the entire screen, like a blue pop up, telling you that Windows uh, has prevented this application from running, right? So this is the Windows or the Windows Defender smart screen. It helps protect your device by checking for unrecognized applications and files from the web. As you can see here, Windows Defender Smart Screen, check apps and files is off. So here it's turned off, right? You can just click on warn, which means it will warn you when an application uh, that is not signed, maybe by Microsoft, tries to run. It will tell you that this application is not recognized, so run it on your own risk. If you click on block, it's going to entirely block the application without telling you. And we have exploit protection is built onto Windows 10 to help protect your device against attacks. So exploit protection settings. These are various settings related to uh, Windows protection from exploits. It's recommended guys to keep all of, all of these on. We have this one off. Forced relocation of images not compiled with dynamic pace. All right, and lastly, guys, we will talk about something else, which is the volume shadow copy. If you go to this PC, and let's see if there's shadow copy enabled, configure shadow copies. So as you can see, as for the description, shadow copies allow users to view the contents of the shared folders as the content existed at previous points in time. It allows you guys to create snapshots, basically, snapshots of the operating system. So maybe you can create a restore point, perform a restore point, configure restore settings, or delete restore points. If, it, if shadow copy is, is enabled, it means you can perform all of the things I mentioned, restore points, configuring them, creating a restore point, and so on and so forth. So basically guys, restore points or shadow copies are often exploited uh, or often have vulnerabilities. I remember we have a video, maybe on Hack the Box, where we exploited a vulnerability in shadow copies. Enough to say that shadow copies can be used, guys, to create snapshots of your current operating system. You can just enable it from here, or you can create a shadow copy of a specific volume. 
as you can see I created one here right this is a shadow copy and this one I can restore it whenever I want from system restore now one last thing I want to mention guys here I put a couple notes if you are subscribed to my channel membership you can you will know that you will uh, you will have access to these notes so I created a new note file called Windows from here I just listed essential aspects about Windows operating system also troubleshooting scenarios what to do when you encounter with a specific error I'm gonna expand on this list to cover more uh, scenarios more troubleshooting scenarios more management scenarios and more commands that you might need as an, a regular user or as an administrator so uh, that was it guys and again if you want to get access to all the answers for these three tasks you can check the uh, I have, I'm gonna write them in a separate blog post in my website you can check them in the description of this video so that was it and i will see you in the next video